Wat tel vir jou? Wat tel vir jou in hier die seisoen van jou leven? Wat denk jy moet tel in hier die seisoen van jou leven? Hoeveel keer draai jy na God toe, nie as iemand wat jy wil wees, of wie jy wens jy was, of wie jy dink jy is, of wie jy glo jy behoort te wees nie. Maar net soos jy is. See, worship wasn't personal. It was conditional until I finally came to understand that worship is His gift to me. Ek was nog altyd a work in progress, maar daar is geen vooruitgang sonder vordering nie. Misschien kom vordering met my beleidings. Ek koop een boorkie wat sê, leef eenvoudig, eerder as om eenvoudig net te leef. Ek moes leer dat om vraag te heen nie beteken dat ek God bevraag teken nie. Want ek mag vraag, ek mag met God praat, ek mag meer van hom leer. Sodra ek dink daar is tyd vir stilte, kom klop die lawaai aan my deur, dit gebeur so gereeld. Hoeveel keer het jy al na God toe gehaard loop? Vir minder van jouself en meer van hom, vir minder skuld en meer genade, vir minder goeders en meer vryheid, vir minder onkunde en meer weisheid, vir minder geraas en meer vrede. Wees stil, my siel. Wees stil voor die Heere. I want to read to you uh, some words from Scripture. I'm going to read from the greatest sermon that was ever preached, (laughs) the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, you can read about that sermon in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, and Matthew chapter 7. The greatest sermon that has ever, ever been preached. And I'm taking you today to the heart of that sermon, the heart of that sermon. And I want you to listen very carefully to Jesus' words. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, the body more than clothes? Look, look, look at the birds of the air. Don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they. And can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. And yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor, was dressed like one of these. That is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows, knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. 
each day has enough trouble of its own. We thank God for these words. We pray that through these words that God will speak to us, that we will hear God's word. Amen. Uh, Debbie, Debbie's the person I'm married to. <laughs> Debbie and I have a favorite uh, TV program. Uh, it's the Australian version of MasterChef. I don't know how many of you watch it, uh, but we've been watching it now for a few years. And over the, over the years, I've noticed something. I've noticed that the judges like to use one word. Whenever a contestant uh, brings a dish that looks uh, cluttered and complicated and complex, the judges look at it, and then usually George says to the contestant, simplify, simplify, simplify. I've got a hunch too that sometimes when I preach and I bring to you my dish here on a Sunday and it's cluttered and complicated and complex, I can almost hear you under your breath saying to me, hey Trevor, simplify, simplify, simplify. I want to suggest today that that is a very, very important word for us to hear. Simplify, simplify, simplify. It's very easy today to live cluttered lives Our minds get cluttered, our schedules get cluttered, our inbox gets cluttered, our drawers get cluttered, our garages get cluttered, and we find ourselves often just living in the midst of clutter. And the consequences are tragic. We lose our direction in life, We miss our purpose. We, we don't separate the important from the urgent. We become reactive instead of proactive. And most importantly, when we live our cluttered lives, so often God becomes a stranger. We lack a sense of God's presence and God's reality in our cluttered lives. And so the question is, and it's, a, it's an important question, how do we journey from clutter to simplicity? What does that journey look like? And it's against that backdrop the backdrop of that question that I want to extend to each of you and to myself, a gospel invitation. I want to share with you some, some of the words that Jesus spoke in the greatest sermon that has ever been preached, ever. One of the reasons we follow Jesus is he, is he knows how to live. And he's running a masterclass right now 
in how to live, and he's enrolling students, and he's saying to you and me, hey, follow me, and I will lead you into life, life at its best, at its deepest, at its richest. And he gives us some words. And I want to read again just two verses, verses 33 and 34. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And I want to suggest, friends, that when we begin to shape our lives around those words, we begin to journey from clutter to simplicity. I've lived with those words this week. And somehow in the midst of all that's been going on in the world this week, those words have taken on for me a very, very powerful meaning. I want to explore them with you. Very simply, very simply. I want to say first of all, friends, that we we journey from, from clutter, from clutter to simplicity when we, when, we set, when we set our hearts on his kingdom. Look again carefully, look again carefully at verse 33. But seek first his kingdom. Now notice, please, notice what Jesus is not saying. Don't put words into his mouth. Jesus is not saying here that we mustn't plan for the future. He's not saying that. Jesus is not saying that things like food and clothes, etc., are not important. He's not saying that. He's not saying that. He's not saying that we mustn't be concerned about our work and our jobs. He's not saying that. He is saying something else. He's challenging us to reset the direction of our hearts. He's challenging us to shift the point of gravity in our lives. He's challenging us to change our priorities radically. He's challenging us to relocate the center of our attention. Set your hearts first on God's kingdom. In simple English, put God first. Put God first. The God who created this world, who holds it together. The God who created you and me, who loved us into existence. The God who knows you by name and knows me by name. The God who came into this world in Jesus Christ. The God who gave his life for you and me. Put that God first. Get to know that God. Study God's word. Do God's will. 
see God everywhere, in the birds and the flowers, and especially in the face of your neighbor. Put God first. And that's where simplicity is born. When I rediscover my center in God, I don't know about you, it's very difficult, isn't it? You know, at seven o'clock in the morning, I can say, God, I surrender my life to you. 7.30, 30 minutes later, when the first crisis hits, I take my life back. That's how it is. Seven o'clock, I say, our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Eight o'clock, Father in heaven, hallowed be my name. My kingdom come, my will be done. Within 30 minutes. How do we keep God first through the day? I've been washing my hands a lot this week. I think you've been washing your hands a lot more than ever before. And that moment for me has become so important. Every time, every time I wash my hands, I remember my baptism. I've died with Christ, I've risen with Christ. Every moment I wash my hands, God, I'm gonna put you first, I'm gonna put you first. Every time I wash my hands, God, will you cleanse my heart of every virus that separates me from you and me from others. And I find as I wash my hands each day, I reset, I reset my heart, I just reset my heart. Seek first God's kingdom. That's where simplicity is born. But let's take another step. We move, we move from, from clutter to simplicity when we put people before things. When we put people before things. Come back to that text. Jesus says, Jesus says, go back, verse 33. Set your heart, seek first the kingdom of God. What's the next phrase? And his righteousness. What does Jesus mean? Jesus is talking to Jewish people. Jewish people, in order to be righteous, had to keep the commands. They had to keep the commands. How many commands are there in the Old Testament? How many? 613. 613. And a righteous Jew is someone who keeps those commandments. Can you imagine how complicated life must have got? How cluttered? How complex? Am I keeping this law? Am I keeping that law? Am I keeping that law? And what does Jesus do? He takes us into a righteousness that goes beyond that. And he, he brings 613 commandments into two. Love God with all your heart. Mind, soul, strength, the Shema, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four. And then he adds one other commandment. And love your neighbor as yourself. To be righteous is to be rightly related to God and to neighbor. That's what it's about. Putting God first and putting people before things. I think that's when life gets so cluttered. It's when we, 
It's when we love things and use people instead of loving people and using things. That's when life gets cluttered. When we get attached to things. We forget each other, we forget people, relationships, connection. I don't know, but for me, the one thing that this pandemic has done, the coronavirus, it's reconnected, friends, whether we like it or not. This virus is no respecter of, of boundaries, of nationality, of culture, of language, of will. It's no, we are bound together. We are bound together. We are bound together. I don't know about you, last night, 11 o'clock, I was looking on YouTube, and I saw this moving scene. I think it's Siena in Italy. And the streets are deserted. Everyone is in self-isolation. And then in the street with all these blocks of apartments and flats, one person comes onto the balcony and begins to sing. And then the neighbor comes out onto the balcony and begins to sing. And then another neighbor and another neighbor and the person across the street and the street is singing. Finding connection with each other deeply, putting people before things. It's simplicity, it's what life's about. Been a pastor for a long time. And one of the sacred, sacred privileges of my life has been to walk with people to their death. I don't want to exaggerate. I have literally walked with hundreds of people to their death. I've sat with people. I have never ever heard someone say to me, Trevor, I wish I had more things while I lived. Never, not once. I wish I'd had a better car, better house. Never, not once, not once. I've heard again and again and again, God, I'm, I'm so sorry that I, that I neglected my relationships, those that were close to me. I ne- neglected my kids. I put things before people. Jesus says, put God first, and then put people before things. And then simplicity begins to grow. Our lives become less cluttered, we clearer. But there's one more thing, and then we can go. We move we move from clutter to simplicity when by God's grace we learn to live one day at a time. Look again, look again at verse 34. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has got enough troubles of its own. You see, Jesus knows something. He knows something about his Father. He knows that the kingdom of God works day by day by day. He teaches us to pray, Father, give us our daily bread today, not for tomorrow. It's this invitation to live deeply and richly and fully in the present moment. It's God's gift to us. That's why we call it present. It's in the present moment that God meets us and blesses us and holds us and helps us. Just in the present moment. And the one thing that keeps us from living in the present is worry. 
We worry, we worry, we worry deeply about the future. Can I make a confession? I'm a worrier. I'm a worrier. I've lived with low level anxiety for different reasons most of my life. I have a deep, deep understanding of what chronic anxiety can be like at times. I know what it's like sometimes to be awake from one o'clock in the morning till half past three, four o'clock. I know that, and I know how the events of this week have triggered many people who suffer from anxiety. And Jesus knows that. He's not laying a burden on us. And in the midst of our worry and anxiety, he comes to us. And he invites us to speak to him about our worries and about our anxieties and to put his father first. And slowly we get the grace that we need to live a day at a time, a day at a time, a day at a time. That's why I love the serenity prayer, living one day at a time, enjoying each moment each moment. Let me end. We live in a very difficult moment, a very difficult moment. And in this difficult moment, Christ comes to us. Each one. He's running a master class on life. <laughs> he said, in this world, you're gonna have trouble. And then he invites us to follow him. And he gives us some words. And I want to say today, friends, that as we shape our lives around his words, with his help, with the help of his spirit, as we put God first, as we put people before things, as we learn, learn, learn by his grace to live in the present moment, we go on that long journey from clutter to a beautiful, rich, deep simplicity. Let's pray together. Dear God, we seek to find words to share your word. We ask today that you would fill in all the gaps, that you would take the word of Christ plant it deeply in our life, give us the trust and the faith that we need to know that it's in your word that we find life. So come, Lord, come to us. Renew our faith and our, our hope and our love for you and for those around about us. This is our prayer. We offer it to you with all the love and longing of our hearts. We say together as God's people, amen. And may the joy of the risen Christ be with you. Bless you, friends.